You get the first question? Come on. He's doing video right now, so he's past the range. Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, I like that jacket. What's the Thank where did that one come from? Oh, this is me right here. You know, Usman84kg.com. Go ahead, click the link. Get you a jacket. Nice new one. We're going big time now. You're starting yeah. to run Yeah, of course. You gotta start something. Can't get punched in the face forever. There you go. Uh, obviously, this is a rematch people have wanted to see for a long time. Uh, it's been almost two years. How much do you think you've evolved since the first fight? Do you think you've kind of, I know you said you've lapped the division, but do you feel like you've lapped Colby in terms of skills? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm just in a place to where I understand what I do, I understand where I'm at. You know, early on in my career, it was like, oh, you live and fight, literally, you live and fight to fight. So it's like, I gotta survive, I gotta win, I gotta win, I gotta win. I'm in a position now to where it's, you know, I just want to perform the best I can. I want to have, continue to have these legendary performances because, you know, I have a lot less to go than where I've come from. So, um, I want to make them memorable so my daughter, my kids can look back one day and say, wow, daddy, you did that? You know, so that that's really what I care about right now. Um, just this night, I mean, the teammates, obviously Justin and Rose, can you give us some insight into what the training for this has been like, and obviously you being the one that's going to look to try to close the show uh, for the team? Oh, it's, phen it's been phenomenal. I think um, in Jacksonville, the last fight I fought, it was, uh, it was, it was great. I wanted to, I, I wanted Rose on that card as well, and, you know, we were able to make it happen, and, and Obviously, you saw what we produced that night, but we felt a little incomplete. Yes, Justin was there, so it definitely helped us feel better, but we felt a little incomplete because we didn't get to watch that madman throw it down. So, um, you know, as soon as, you know, this was a tentative date that we were looking at, um, I said, yo, how about we get Justin on that too? And uh, of course, our wonderful manager, Ali Abdelaziz, was able to try to make that happen for us. And for you guys, it's gonna be a treat as well. You're never short on confidence as it was, but to do what you did to Jorge Masvidal in the last fight, um, what did that do to just your self-belief and just you know, not only knowing what you can do, but seeing it put into practice? A lot of this is, is, is manifestation and, and the work that I've put in. You know, you, you put in a lot of work for years, like, and, I, and I've say, and I know I say it, it's kind of hard for people to imagine, but you know, I was putting in work when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was putting in work just to work, hoping that one day it's gonna turn into something. And it eventually did. And of course you visualize and you imagine all the things that you wanna do. And I knew it. Right after that fight, I don't know if you guys ever saw, you saw the video on the, uh, Anatomy of a Fighter, you know, shout out to my man, Will Harris. Um, I was backstage and I was just unhappy. I was unhappy with the performances like I mentioned earlier. I want to go out there and leave these performances to where when I'm done, and I, I, I can look back and be happy with. And I wasn't happy with that. I was like, no, you know, yes, it was tough because I took the fight on six days notice. And um, as hard as it is to believe, I went through more adversity than he did. But of course, mine wasn't published because I don't need to do all of that, you know. And going out there and still performing like that, I just didn't feel like that was my best. So I wanted to right that wrong. So of course I was confident. I knew what I was able to do. I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what I was going to do. I manifested it. I saw it over and over, trained it, practiced it. Went out there and to uh, put an emphatic finish like that on for the people. It would let you guys know what I've been saying for years. You know, I'm the most vicious and most well-rounded welterweight there's ever been. And um, I think that proved it. You mentioned right or wrong with Masvidal. What about Colby? Is there anything from that first fight that lingers with you that you want to correct in this one? He's obviously said a ton about the refereeing and claiming you fouled him and this and that and the other thing. Is there any of that with you that you are hoping to correct with this one? No, nothing lingered at all. I mean, you know, like uh, you guys saw the viral video of me and him uh, <laughs> talking when he turned red. Um, it, it's simple. It wasn't a decision. I finished you, and um, of course he, he did the best he could. I, I actually like the fact that you know he stuck with the excuses and he kept making the excuses because again it made you guys all want to see that again, right? And so yeah, he did a wonderful job there. But um, he said um, he's saying oh it's a fake eye poke when the 
Madison watch you finger my eye. You know, <laughs> he, he said uh, uh, it wasn't a nut shot, and I got five. It, I, I got five minutes. He grazed my cup. That's true. And of course, as a man, when you know when your cup gets grazed, you anticipate what's coming after that that pain. And I was anticipating the pain, and then after about 30 seconds, you guys can go back and watch the video. Literally about 30 seconds, I'm like, yeah, that pain's not coming. Let's get let's get this scrap. Let's get let's go. And we continued on. And you saw that the shot where I broke his jaw. Clean off. Clean shot. He was holding his eye. Did you guys see that? He was holding that eye. He was complaining to the ref that it was an eye poke. And it was the commentator, DC was like, and that was a straight right hand, right on the butt. And he said it was his eye. So who's actually uh, claiming fouls here? You know, but at the end of the day, he's done a great job of getting the public to believe that. And, you know, I commend him for that. But for me, the right, the, the wrong that I want to write is just kind of, in that fight, I fought with emotion. Uh, as much emotion as I was willing to display is what I fought with. And um, which is why I think I obviously I got hit quite a bit. But it was fun. I had fun. That, that lets you know that I got a little man man in me too. You know, I don't mind getting hit. But I would say I, I want to make it a little bit more flawless this time around. Two more quick ones. Um, how much do you just look forward to putting this man behind you? I assume if you beat him again, there will, won't be much talk about a third fight, at least for quite a while. So is that something that you are keen to have happen? Just no more before we coming to him being brought up to you? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because now I'm in the business of, uh, of pay-per-view. So uh, I don't know if I want him in, that far back. You know, Of course, I want to go out there and, uh, and stop him. But... Um, you know, I want him to quickly make his way back so I can stop him again for a little bit more money. And last thing, I'm sure you're going to be asked about Hamza Chamaya Punty this week. Uh, I remember I interviewed you earlier this year and I asked you about him before he had you know, to take all this time off. And you said, all respect to the guy, you showed no ill will. The fact that he seems to be getting a very quick push where you had to do nine fights before you got a title opportunity. What are your thoughts on him now? Is he someone that you see quickly coming on your radar? First and foremost, um, you know, he's done a tremendous job with the opposition that he's been presented with. You know, no shame in that. He's, he's, he's doing great. You know, I like it. I love all the hype that's being there. Like, let's all be honest. You know, life is not fair. You know, we learn that as kids. You know, life isn't fair. So I know, you know, some guys get a faster push, some guys don't. But it is what it is. You know, uh, more power to him. You know, he's doing a phenomenal job with the position that he's being put in. So, you know, hats off to him. As far as me, um, you know, I'm at a point in life to where I'm starting to understand, you know, how much this takes from me. And, you know, I've been nine weeks now away from my daughter and, you know, FaceTime does help, but it doesn't do it justice, you know, as far as being there each and every day. So, you know, obviously I don't, I don't know how much longer I'm willing to do this, you know. Um, they have to make sense for me now. So if he's able to get there, then you know we'll talk about it at that point. Come on, right here. Uh, first of all, is your knuckle okay? Same yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. You know when you when you wrestle and you scrap a lot, you might get a scratch here and there. And you know, of course, you gotta pull a bandage so you don't bleed all over. And before Israel's uh, rematch, Marvin Vittori, he kind of pointed to your fight against Jorge, where you didn't have to take that fight. You just you still took it to, to answer the questions, and he viewed that as starting the second lap, which he's now doing. So is this the start of the second lap for you around this division against Colby? The start? Oof. I'm running. I'm sprinting past these dudes. I'm looking back and smiling at them now. You know, this is a, this is a fun one. I'm, I'm having fun with this now. That's the thing. I'm, I'm having fun with it now. Um, like I, I, I've, I've said before, I've been classically trained in, in all of this, in this sport. You know, coming up and watching guys like Sugar Rashad Evans and going with him to these media tours and, and these big, big fights. You know, um, I was able to get an inside look at what this could be to, out, to where I was able to dream and manifest what I wanted to be. So being up here and, and, and having these opportunities now, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, blessed. and. Uh, feels great, I'm having fun. And obviously since your first fight with him, you've since joined Trevor Whitman, he's also changed camps and he said he's added a whole lot of new wrinkles to his game. So are you expecting a completely new Colby Covington or is it like 
like what, what Tyson Fury's cor corner said when they fought Dante Wilde, that like a fighter's always just gonna go back to what got them to the dance, no matter how much they try to add this deep into their career. Yeah, I'm, I mean, obviously you guys have saw what I've done because, you know, I've been fighting, you know, so you guys have seen that. Um, for him, I can't necessarily say the same because knowing the kind of guy that he is, and we, like I said, we have mutual friends, so I get a good glimpse, I've, I've gotten a good glimpse of who this guy is outside of the cage. And judging by that, you know, I think um, he's the same asshole. And yeah, just at a new team. So at the end of the day, when you get in there with a lion like me and I hit you in the mouth, you're gonna resort to what you know best and you're gonna throw whatever those coaches are saying out the window because you don't really give a shit because you're really an asshole. And finally, uh, Michael Chandler was in here earlier. He jokingly called you a narc, and then he, obviously he was joking. He said he still considers you a good friend. Justin Gaethje said that even if he asked you for advice, it wouldn't even matter because they're still getting into a fist fight. So as someone who knows both men very well, what can fans expect in that fight? I'm not asking for a prediction, but it's yeah. just the fight in general. My predict no. Um, no. Um, Michael Chandler is a you know very very good fighter, explosive fighter. You know, it's one of the reasons, one of the reasons me and him kind of bonded why he came down in HK Boxing a few years back is the fact that we like to work, we like to train smart, and we like to train hard and often. And so me and him gravitated towards one another. And so, yeah, I was able to get a good glimpse of, of who he is as a competitor. And, you know, excellent fighter. Very good, hard-nosed fighter. It's so funny how similar these guys are. Um, Justin is just, uh, this is savage, really, the only word to describe him. This is a guy that kind of loves fighting. I'm being honest with you guys, I don't necessarily love fighting. I love to compete, but this guy just loves what he does. He eats, sleeps, and breathes this. So you guys can expect uh, just the fireworks. And this is one of those fights to where if both of these men are standing after the, that third round, uh, you can tell that they're just, just nuts. This mad man, they can definitely take a shot. Good morning. You, so we spoke, mentioned Hamza here, and you said you know you haven't got long left in this career. When people start breaking up names like him to you, is there a feeling of like, oh, champions work is never done? Like you get rid of one guy, and there's already the next guy ahead of you. I mean, that's that's how it is. Like, come on. After I get done with the fight, what, what did you guys do last time? I just put sent Masvidal to the shadow realm, and you guys are so who's next? It's Kobe next, you know? Like that's that's what it is. It's always going to be that way. And if all champions. You know, especially some of the best champions in the world continue to listen to that. Then basically all you guys want to see is me continue to be successful until I'm not successful. Then you guys can then put that stamp on it and say, ah, he's washed up, he needs to leave. You know, I want to be that champion who does it on, I want to do it on my own time. You know, I like, like, like Habib. And I, I know a lot of people are, are, have been throwing a lot of shades, saying a lot of things about Habib leaving when he wanted to leave. That's how you do it, you know. Even George St. Pierre, that's how you do it. You leave when you want to. You know, you don't let the sport retire. So, yeah, whenever I feel like, you know, that time's there, um, it's time for me to go. You speak about you lapping the division now, and I think you're in this legacy building phase of your career where people are just kind of throwing any situation that you've seen, oh, what can you rise to, you know? I saw you do an interview yesterday, like, oh, can you win another belt? For you personally, what builds more for your legacy? Lapping a division over and over again or winning a second title in a one-off? To me, I don't really, let's be honest, I've kind of done what there is to do in, in MMA and UFC. You know, this Saturday, live on ESPN pay-per-view at Madison Square Garden. What's bigger than that? I've headlined pay-per-views before. The first event back with fans. And, and look how that looked, how that pay-per-view went. You know, fought Kobe the first time, T-Mobile Arena, headline that. You know, went all the way to Abu Dhabi, headline that, in the Fight Island one. I mean, what is there to do in the sport? I've done it, you know. Um, you talk about legacy. I look what I've done to this point. You know, when, when I'm done and I walk away, guys are gonna look back and say, wow, he was special, just like we've done with some of the greats. And so if I'm looking at legacy, I wanna do something that's not been done before. You know, these guys don't really scare me. Anymore. I mean, of course, there is the fear of myself and not, you know, competing and not looking the way that I want to look. But what scares me is since when in history have we ever seen pound for pound in both combat sports at their prime go at it? We've never seen that.
Wouldn't the world love to see that? I know I would. All right, to your left over here. Uh, you know, not to give anything away, but for the last fight with Colby, you kind of said, I'm gonna keep it on the feet for the fans, throw down with them a bit. This time around, I'm getting the sense from you that maybe not having the same feeling, so like I said, not to give anything away, but we expect some wrestling this one. What do you think of that? Listen, I'm better than this guy <laughs> in every way possible. I'm just better than him. And that's just one thing that I do well that I didn't realize until you know, these wins started racking up. I'm like, ah, I kind of control these fights and where they take place and how they go. You know, let, let's work on that. And so, yeah, the fight's gonna play out wherever I want him to play out. Like, obviously, if he wants to not take as much punishment, he's gonna try to wrestle. Then he's gonna realize very quickly, I'm a much better wrestler than him. Then he's gonna have no choice but to stand. But if I want to take him down, I can take him down. And I can take him down if I want. So. We'll have to see. The only thing is, uh, you know, like I said, that first one I wanted to, the world wouldn't have been satisfied if I hadn't done that to him. And so that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do that. This one, I'm gonna be strategic, but <laughs> you can rest assured that I still wanna do some harmful things. And I wanted to ask about your brother, Mohammed, who, you know, he's coming off a loss in the PFL, but, you know, that's always a big kind of thing for fighters, you know, to turn around and come back from that. So I'm just curious how you've kind of been helping him and, you know, given, you know, sharing advice and all that kind of thing going forward and what potential he has still in sport. Yeah, I mean, that, that wasn't his first loss. You know, that was his second loss. You know, he lost before and he bounced back and he, he you know, he got some wins and then got that opportunity. Uh, so he's going to do the same. He, he, Right away, you start to realize, ah, maybe I'm not where I want to be yet. So let me get back to the drawing board. So since then, you know, he's really uh, made the move out to uh, to Colorado, and he's uh, putting a lot of emphasis on his training. So, you know, we want to make him the, you know, the savage that he wants to be. So eventually he'll get there. And you guys will be talking to him, not me. That's what Tomorrow I'll be here on your, uh, your right. You mentioned uh, pound for pound versus pound for pound. I assume you're talking about now as the pound for pound top boxer. Yes, absolutely. Since when have we ever seen the pound for pound mixed martial artists go up against the pound for pound boxer, both in their prime. Not when they're old or retired and you're trying to pull them back, both in their prime. I think that's something that, um, I, I think the biggest ever in history. And that's what I'm looking to do. That's something that scares me. That's something that gets me up in the morning. That's something that I might risk leaving my daughter for another 12 weeks for. So. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if that's something that I'm looking at. And, you know, God willing, you know, this Saturday we do what we need to do, then why not? Will you will you actively try to make that fight happen if you need Colby on Saturday? I mean, yeah, you know, pound for pound mixed martial arts in the world versus pound for pound boxer in the world, promoted by the pound for pound Dana White, why not? Why not? You know, why not? And you're, uh, I mean, coincidentally enough, you're actually going head to head with him. I know. Saturday. We'll see who uh, who does better. I mean, we're both in the business of entertainment nowadays. Um, he's going to entertain on the same night. So are we. We'll see who does better numbers. And then we're going to sit there and uh, we'll have a discussion with the pound for pound best promoter in the game, Dana White, and we'll try to make something happen. Have you spoken to Dana about this? I'd like to express this wish to him. Yeah, 